the flesh and the spirit. Now, uh, 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 can I say something? I can because I got the floor on. Whenever uh, I'm, I'm going to get down here, can I, I got to get down here for a second. Whenever we embarked on this study, my purpose, my, my purpose as pastor was to, to encourage us to get in our Bible. Been like that since I've been here. I, I teach you rightly dividing. I teach you uh, how to get into this Bible and really understand it. Dig, 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 dig. Believe what God says over what the preacher says. Right? I'm big on, I'm big on that. I about ripped the head off. When I embarked on this study, I didn't want you just to get in and know this stuff. I purposefully dug into this study so after knowing it, we would do something with it. Because what good is it knowing, knowing every word of the Bible? You know, um, Jack Van Imp used to could quote the whole New Testament word for word. But what does that mean if I don't apply what I'm reading and what I'm hearing to my life? James said it like this. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. Don't, don't just hear it and go through the motions with this. And so whenever I, when I started this journey on the flesh and the spirit, I honestly, I wanted us to get into this thing. That's why I've been peeling it out so slow. I have really been slowly going through this study. So whenever we hear these things, we'll understand that I am getting it. I want us to. I ain't wasting my voice. I want us to get it. So I said this. We started this series in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 all the way down through verse 21. And we talked about um, if you're in the flesh, you can't be in the spirit. If you're in the spirit, you can't be in the flesh. Paraphrasing. These are the contrary one to the other so that you can't do what you want to do. So he said, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you just walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. We know what that is? Mm -hmm. Don't do it. That plain? That right there is just kindergarten preaching right there. Fornication. We know what that is? Don't do it. Uh, um, lasciviousness. Don't know what that is, do we? That's a big word. That's that, that's that unrestrained uh, lewdness in our life. That's that, that's that stuff that goes through here that we play with too much and we defile our whole body with those things. Lasciviousness, uncleanness. We know what that is. It ain't, it ain't about taking a bath either. You don't take a bath, by the way. Amen, amen, amen. But this uncleanness is just, is just being just flat out ugly. Come on, don't be like that. Um, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, envyings, murders, drunkenness, uh, re revelings or revilings. He said, and such uh, uh, as I tell you that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We've done this Sunday. Kingdom of God is within you. You get it when you get saved, right? You can see it. It's opportunity to get in this thing. But then there's uh, sometimes that, that we forfeit it because we don't die daily. And, and we lose that, that peace that, we, that passes all understanding. We lose that joy or that we don't feel righteous, right? Because we, we walk in the flesh. But one day, there's coming a day. That day of a reckoning when you, 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 and you are going to stand before Jesus Christ. And when we're standing before him, all this trivial mass, no mass, politics, no politics, Trump, Biden, that ain't going to mean a hill of beans when we're standing before the one who gave his life for me. So I ain't worried about y'all. I ain't worried about y'all. I got to take care of all this right here. It's a full-time job. <laughs> you, you with me? Did you wake up this morning and look at him? What? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why we painted up. 
We're trying to cover up ugly. Because if, if we're not careful, that thing's going to jump out. You'd be late to work. You'd you be late to where you're going. And let somebody pull out in front of you going slow. Y'all ain't going to be pointing at them. You with me? So he said this right here. You got to walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So I want to show you with part two of this love one tonight. Galatians says the fruit of the spirit are these. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. He said this right here. Hmm. We'll get in that way down the road. He said against these things, they ain't a law. See, that law is a schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. That law was given to somebody who didn't have a governing system. He gave us a law, showed us we need to be saved. Now he's got this right here. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, ten temperance. He said, against such, there's no law. And so last week, we, we, we dove or delved into to love, and we started looking at love and ultimately got to the agape love or the, or the God type of love. And his love is completely an undeserved love. Anybody in here, anybody under the sound of my voice thinks that God owes you anything? Come on. Come on, y'all remember the Pharisees, right? Y'all remember the Pharisees? I'm glad I'm not like one of these, these tax collectors, one of these publicans. <laughs> I got it all together. You know, some people like that. It's the reason Jesus put it in our Bible. I'm not there. I'm on the other side of the, I don't even deserve the love that he showed and, and every day. I'm not talking about when I got saved. I surely didn't un, un, deserve that. But since I've been saved, I don't deserve the love of God. But there it is. Because he said last week, well, we hit it last week in Romans chapter number eight and yeah, somewhere at the end of it. He says, who shall separate us from the love of God? It's a question mark. He said, shall death, uh -uh, life, principalities, powers, things present, things come, height. Death. He said, nothing. Paul said, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And he said this right here. He said it. I'm talking about love undeserved. He said, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Undeserved as it is, so nothing can't separate us from it. That's why we go to church. Not because we have to. Because according to Acts chapter 20, he purchased the church, the body, with his own blood. I get to just come up in here and say, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me as undeserving as I am. He said, scratch all that. Then we talked about the inseparable love. We talked about his love is great to save sinners. But here's where I want to go tonight. I want to give you continuation of this, the place of love. And then I want to give you the demonstration of love. Can I show you, please let me show you. Can I show you the very place of love? I'm going to, I hope I shock y'all tonight. Now, I'm not showing you this. It's, it's, been, it's been in your Bible for ages. It didn't come from me. But I want to show you something. I want these things to stick out like a stop sign saying, 
Time out. You ain't doing that. But you can. The place of love. Ephesians chapter number five. Look at verse number one. Got to start it like this. So you can see. Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. I like to say it like this. Paul writing to the church at Pine Grove Baptist. Okay? What these letters are for. So he said it like this. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Footnote. When you when you're saved into the family of God, you're a child of God. So he says, okay, 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 okay. We had parents in our life. They tried to lead us the best they could. We will try to follow them and, and, and do things. God's saying, I got it better than that. I ain't never going to let you down. I ain't never going to leave you. I ain't going to never walk away from you. I ain't going to never do harm to you. I ain't going to never cause any evil to come on you for, for what you do and don't do. God says, I love you. He said, now follow me as dear children. Verse 2, verse 2. You got to see it. And walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice for a sweet smelling savor. Okay, so he said this right here. The place of love is the place that you walk in. He said you walk in love. You know, you have the opportunity to love and hate. Nobody makes you do that. Now, I know this. In my spirit, man, I love you like nothing. In my flesh, man, huh. In the flesh, I'm a mess. I don't love me a lot of times over here. You with me? So what I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to see, the very place of this love is, is the atmosphere in which the Christian walks. This, is, this, should be, this should be oozing off of us. You ever, you ever, oh, I'm going to get into it. I'm about to jump ahead. You ever helped somebody, showed somebody that you cared about them, showed somebody that you loved them, and did not expect one thing in return? Do you know the atmosphere that person was just in when you was around doing that thing spoke volumes of the person you are? So what I'm saying is, every day and every moment I walk in this atmosphere of love is radiant. And everybody else reciprocates from it, although I might not get a cotton-picking thing from it. You with me? It's, it's weird. It's weird. Walk in love. It's almost like you, you're getting into something when you do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said, if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And this first outbreak of fruit is love. Huh. You know, I've been walking in my flesh all this time. And I just stepped right into the spiritual walk. And the first place I went is love. Well, I'll be. How about that for 2021, 2020? You ready? We don't love nobody over here but us. So why not step in that atmosphere of here? And the first dropping of fruit in my life is love. No, 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 no. I don't want to lose you. I think I need you to go to Colossians. I think I need you to go to Colossians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. You like that cluster? I gave it to you, didn't I? I do want you to go to Colossians chapter 3. It's only seven pages over probably. According to how big your writing is. Colossians chapter 3. Look with me in verse number, verse number 12. Not only is it the atmosphere, but it's the, it's the tie that binds. It's the garment the Christian is to put on. Love is the, is the actual garment that we put on. Watch, verse 12. It says, put on therefore the elect of God, holy and beloved 
Listen what you're putting on. Come on. Put on holy and beloved bowels of mercy. You know, those things that, that really care about others more than yourself. Bowels of mercy. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Meekness. Long-suffering. Watch. Forbearing one another. And, oh, really? <laughs> really? We ain't got it to love yet. And forgiving one another. Huh. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Anybody ever wronged you, crossed you? Forgive them. Here's the verse. Here's the verse. All that's good. Bowels of mercy, humbleness, kindness. He said, verse 14, and above all, these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. It's the, it's the tie. that binds you with me this here is walking in the spirit and above all all that other stuff he said above all anything like that you can do he said you need to put on love he said because that right there is what binds us all together okay first of all we love him because he first loved us we love others because he loved us and all this thing ties. You know what we're drawn to? We're drawn to people that love us. Amen. We repel those don't like us. If you anything like me, I ain't studying y'all. <laughs> There's a way. Listen, listen. Anybody ever cross you? Don't go back around them. That was easy. That was easy, y'all. That was free. We put ourselves in some dumb situations. Forgive them. Love them from a distance. But don't hate them. But might not open the door back up for them for them to come back in and keep doing it to you. I'm just giving you just common East Rockingham sense. Love is the universal motive for all that we do. You think, you think, listen, you think Christians today, no, no, listen, we're not getting our, our, our backs whipped or our heads cut off or we ain't, we ain't persecuted like that. But do you think it's really easy to be a Christian today? We can't, this is, they don't, this world, this country that we're in is anti-God. They don't want God anywhere in this place. And when you start mentioning it, so it ain't easy. It ain't as easy as it used to be, right? I got saved 20, going on 22 years ago. 22 years ago, I'd go on visitation. 22 years ago, I'd go on visitation. If I went, in, went knocked on five doors, three of them would let me in. Two of them would turn the TV all the way down and let me talk to them. Man, I busted this block t time and time. Nobody let me in their house. Y'all won't let me in. All I want to do is give you the best news you'll ever hear in your life. I'm going to take Ed McMahon with me on visitation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they'll let me in then, won't they? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Ed, take that check on. They don't need that. Let me show them what they need. Love is to prevent our Christian liberty from turning into destructive selfishness. Um... It says, for brethren, according to Galatians, you have been called unto liberty. Only not, use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh. He said, but by love, serve one another. You know what we'll do? We got liberty. We can do what we want to do. But a lot of times, because we got that attitude, we we'll use it as an occasion to the, to the flesh to stay away from everybody because I want to do what I want to do. He said, no, no, no. When you serve one another, you got to go to them to do it. Remember Jesus girded himself? 
And he got down and he washed the disciples' feet. He was showing us a servant's heart. Do you know every, everybody you serve ain't going to reciprocate thank yous? That's okay. That's okay. That's not the motive. He said, by love, you serve one another. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. His love uh, is to characterize our preaching and teaching and delivering. You, you ever, you ever, you ever, um, you, you ever witnessed anybody? You ever, you ever just went and, you remember, okay, let me say it like this. Remember when you was a young Christian and you were so excited about Jesus and you go out there and you tell people, you need to get right with God. If you don't get saved, you're going to die, go to hell. <laughs> Y'all didn't know them people. <laughs> we knew them. Do you know love to that person that you're witnessing to will produce a lot more fruit than you kicking their door down? Uh, no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong now. Love is still the truth. Right? Love ain't just hugging everybody. Love is the truth. We ought to speak the truth in love. Do you know lo the truth hurts people's feelings? But it don't mean you don't love them. I got, I got a good verse. It's been my life verse. Because I'm mouthy and I had to use something to justify being mouthy. Proverbs 29.6 I think says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. That means I don't know. I, I'm going to say it like this. Girl, that dress don't look good on you. You know, have you ever seen somebody come out with a big old, big old bow all in the wrong place and they walk all up in the church? <laughs> and you can look at them and tell they, they, either they ain't got a friend or a mirror. <laughs> you know what will help that person? Somebody going to them in love and telling them the truth. Honey, you see what I'm saying? The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend, right. but the kisses of an enemy mm -hmm. is deceitful. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl, that thing looks good on you. Mm -hmm. Let them go out there looking like a clown. <laughs> and y'all all glory. No, you don't need to hurt the feelings, preacher. Listen. I'd rather you tell me I got a booger on my nose instead of me looking in the mirror having to find it as I get through preaching. Right, right. <laughs> right. You with me? All I'm saying is that you can tell the truth in love. But, but we're so scared of telling the truth that somebody's not going to like me. Right. You with me? Don't, 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 don't fall into that category. But you ought to be in the atmosphere of love. You ought to be able to walk everywhere you go. You ought to love. You're, you got a voice? Everybody got a voice? Does everybody use it? Half of you. Use it. God gave it to you. You ever, you ever got loud? You ought to go, y'all out there in, uh, in the country. Miss Paul, you ought to go out there tomorrow and, and call them chickens. Chickens! And just give it all you got. What I'm saying, it didn't feel good, just let it out one time. Amen. <laughs> Tell them you love them while you're doing it. <clears throat> Let me show you a demonstration. Let me show you a demonstration of this love. Demonstrating our love toward God first is very key. You can't love a soul. I can't love my wife like I'm supposed to love my wife unless I love God the way I'm supposed to love God. I said it to start with. This right here is God on paper. You with me? Do I love him? Or do I set him to the side? Scratch around. Do I love her or just set her to the side? I'm sleeping in the doghouse if I do that. Okay? So, in order for me to, to, to demonstrate the atmosphere of love, I got to first love God. I was talking to a, a dear lady today. I believe her. We got a loving church here. I believe we do. But I want it to be more of a loving church. I'm going to show you how. Can I show you how? Can I do it? 
first of all, improper demonstrations of love. These are improper, okay? Number one, some people think we prove our love by shouting from the rooftop. Billy Bob loves Charlene. Y'all ain't listening to country music? <laughs> we think that's the way we display our love or demonstrate our love. We think um, we demonstrate our love by putting it on a bumper sticker saying, honk if you love Jesus. <laughs> How far did that go? Whatever decibels that horn was, the sound that carried that far out, that's, that's it. Or others think that whatever they do in the name of the Lord, that would be pleasing to Him. Right? But let me show you. Uh, turn to Matthew 7. I, I was going to quote it. I want you to see it. Matthew 7. Let me see where I'm at on my time. Yeah, I got a little time. Matthew 7 and verse 21. These are the ones that just think, well, if I, if I do it for the will of the Lord, you know, it's got to be love. I love Him because I'm doing this. Do you know a lot of people classify their love for what they do? You know, uh, Paul's, Paul, let, me do, let me do a marriage counseling, just real quick, marriage counseling. Can I do this? Y'all ever heard of the five love languages? One of the great authors that put that thing together for marriage, for couples and stuff like that. Five love languages. There's gifts. In other words, if, if your love language is gifts, if I buy you a gift, you're going to be so happy. Words of affirmation. Girl, you look pretty today. If that's your love language, then she'll get something from that. Acts of service. Make me some tea, woman. <laughs> you got to throw that in there sometimes to get y'all all, y'all all serious tonight. <laughs> Quality time. Quality time, right? Um, or um, physical touch. Physical touch. Five love languages. Look it up. It's, it's good. Good little guide. Help you. I said that to say, we try to show Jesus we love Him by the acts of service that we do. What if His love language is an acts of service? So then what we got to do? We got to figure out what His love language is. It's all in here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Let me just give you this first because you got to see this. Uh, Matthew 7, 21 not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. We know you've been in rightly divided long enough that the kingdom of heaven is a physical, literal, visible kingdom on earth, 1,000 year millennial reign of Christ. Hang on, I knew it. You're going to heaven. But for sake of this, read, let's read it. Um, Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Didn't we do a work for you? And in thy name cast out many devils. Look at us, look at us go. And in thy name um, done many wonderful works. And then when I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from, uh, from me, you workers of iniquity. So just because we try to do all things that are pleasing to him, I'm sure that stuff like that is kind of pleasing to him. He wants to know us. I could go give my wife a hundred gifts a day. That ain't going to work for my wife. I could do a hundred things for her. That ain't going to work. What I'm saying, I got to find what she wants. I said that to say, here it is. Proper demonstration of the love to God is keeping His commandments. Now, for sake of me not remembering them all, because I might miss one, and us not going all the way back to go through the long, I got the short of them. I'm going to ask you this. I don't want you to answer out loud. This is what we call a rhetorical question. I want you to inside nod. 
and not outside nod. Okay? Commandments. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, we just messed up. Because anything, any person, any building, any activity, anything that takes the place of God in our lives, he said, don't do it. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Did he say that? Did we mess up on that one a lot? So are we a loving church? Okay, that's just one. I didn't even get to the rest of them. Graven images. Don't have any. That's, that's bowing down to angels and bowing down to cherubs. and bow, Remember the cardinals? We bow down to cardinals and we, we bow down to rainbows and we bow down to um, Picassos. No, no, he said, don't do that. He said, don't put no graven images up and worship them. He said, worship the Lord thy God with all your heart. He said, worship him with all your soul and with all your mind. He said, you give it to me. Give it to all them statues. I told you, James Knox just, I love him. I love him. He took, I'm telling you, he walked in there and in and, and, and the hospital to see that woman. And she had a, a figurine of Mary up there. It's kind of like the, about equivalent to the Virgin Mary right there as far as the statues. Now watch. He walks in there and lays it down. He wants to talk to her. And they're whoa, whoa, panicked. And he said, oh, if, she, if she's God, she'll get up from there. Pretty bold to me. I don't think there's anything wrong with being bold. You can do it in love. He said, I love you so much, I'm going to tell you the truth. Everybody that come in this, in this hospital didn't tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You with me? Don't have none. Don't take the Lord God's name in vain. You know, we, we old schoolers, all we got is GD to work with. But oh my, oh my gosh, oh my God, oh my all that. We'll throw it all out there carelessly. His name's reverent. His name's holy. Heard the handle it. Old, old black preacher. Old black preacher from, I think it's from Tennessee. He said the boys used to cuss Jesus' name at work. And they'd just say, they'd use Jesus Christ as a cuss word. Lord help me. But Jesus Christ. You know what the old black preacher done? He said every time they'd cuss him like that, he'd bow down. And he said, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Get up and go back to work. <laughs> Tell me that won't preach. Don't do it. Um, remember the Sabbath day. Old Testament, that's Saturday. We observe Sunday. We worship the Lord on Sundays. We worship the Lord on Sundays. We don't just come through the motions. We worship God. We get an opportunity to make this day holy. Amen. Honor thy father and mother. Do it. <coughs> don't kill. You ain't got to kill nobody. We think it's always with a gun or a sword or a rock or something like that. You kill them with your words. Be careful. Don't kill nobody. Don't commit adultery. That was all in the works of the flesh, right? Don't do it. Don't steal. You know, we take stealing on the level of robbing the bank. Stealing is robbing the boss man. Of our, you know what I'm saying? He said, don't steal. He said, oh my goodness. Don't be blabbing rumors about somebody that ain't true. You know they're true? If you know they're true, go to them. He says, don't bear false witness on another person. And he said, the, the last one, don't covet what they got. 
Don't go get their stuff. Don't go act like you want their stuff. But look at this. The reason I said that is I believe, I believe we're a loving church. I believe in general we're a loving church. I believe we can love him more. I believe we mess up on just 10 of them. Not counting the 600 that's out there, laws. We mess up on 10. And so he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Then he said this. I, I want you to turn. This will be the last place we'll go tonight. I want you to turn to 1 John chapter 4. That's right before the revelation. 1 John chapter 4. If you love God and you got that in its place. Amen. Amen. That's um, just keep his commandments. If you love God like you're supposed to, you can do this one. If you love God like you're supposed to, you can do this one right here. Love the brethren. Love the brethren. First John chapter 4 in verse number 20. If a man say, can I help y'all with women out? And put my little whatever brackets in there. If a woman say, if a man say or a woman say that I love God, I love the Lord. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me, right? And hateth his brother or sister, he or she is a liar. That's hard. Is God love? God is love. Is God love? Did God say that? God said that. Will you discount God for being a lover of us if he calls us liars? God didn't stop loving us because he called us a liar. He said, you can't say you love God and you go hating your brother or your sister. You a liar. I like how he's just, maybe y'all don't need it as frank as I do. I need stuff like this to get in my face and come a finger at finger at the page and say, hey, dude, you ain't doing it right, you big liar. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a liar. Matter of fact, that's a pressure point for me. Call me a liar, I'm going to put roofing tacks under your car. You know what I mean? I'm just, listen, listen. How can we say that we love God and hate our brother? Well, we don't really hate them. Well, do you love them? Well, I don't really love them. Well, no, 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 no. And I told you, I want to show us tonight, not just say it, not just read it. I want to show us there's a very possible way, there's a great high possibility, probability for us to love everybody. Not in word. But indeed, and in truth, you see, we got the, the deed part down, but we don't have the truth part down. Or we got the word part down, and we don't have the deed part down. You, you, you with me? What I, I want us to, okay, okay, okay. If I love the brethren, I love you. No matter what, if you ugly to me, Jamie, I love you. If you spread lies about me, I love you. If you hate on my wife, I love you. The, you see, you, this is just a check, check, check. You see, th these things right here is where the rubber meets the road. Because you cross my family, I better be walking in the spirit. You with me? And if I'm walking in the Spirit, this little particle of fruit pops off called love. So the question is, not just this church, but is every church a loving church? It can be. And the only way it can be is if your pastor walks in the Spirit and every parishioner walks in in the Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit, the first one, is love. 
I want us to be a loving church. I want us to be, listen, if y'all don't be, I want me to be. Because God is love. And God said, follow me, son. I'm going to show you how to do it. And as long as I follow God, as long as I keep his word, as long as I keep his commandments, I've got the opportunity to walk in the spirit and not be a liar. I like it real. I like it so honest. I used to say 15 years ago, 18 years ago, you can't preach too hard to me. You can't. You can't. I like just in your face preaching. I do. I like when the preacher's ugly and spits on me. <laughs> With his finger a foot long sticking in my nose and whatever he's preaching, the Holy Ghost of God convicts my heart, shows me the error of my ways and I got opportunity to get it right. I like it. Don't you sugarcoat nothing with me and oh, bless everybody. We just need to love everybody. Okay? Yeah, you should. But you ain't going to really tap into it until you know how to get it. And the only way to get it, you got to walk in the Spirit, guys. I got to walk in the Spirit. And once I do, oh my, my, my. You ever, you ever, let's, let's rewind. Let's go back in time. I'll close with this. I got a little bit more, and I might recap it next week when I hit joy, but let's, let's rewind. Come on. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Can we do that? Just for a moment. Everybody under the sound of my voice, go back to the day you got saved. Okay? You might not know the date. You might not know the time it was, but I guarantee you if you're saved, you know the place where you was when you asked God to come into your heart and save you. You remember that? Okay. okay. Memory lane now. Maybe not a week. Maybe not two weeks. Somewhere around that time. It's like the scales fell off of you. You done cried so much that you're happy that God would save a sinner like you. I mean, I just, I used to think it was just all the toxins having to come out of me. I just cried so much and praised God so much. And the, and, and, the, and the grass was greener and the sky was bluer and just, man, this is good. You know what that done? It gave me almost like a euphoria, like, I want you to have what I got. I want to share something with you. I remember getting on the phone. Mama got saved. One daddy, man, I got saved. Call my brother. I got saved. Call my sister. I, I got saved. And every one of them said, click, 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 click. <laughs> I didn't care. I go, y'all don't want it? Hey, boss man. He said, why are you so happy? I said, man, I got saved. He said, what do you mean saved? I said, well, sit down a minute. I said, all I know is I once was lost, but now I'm found. He said, is that it? I said, I think. He said, where you go to church? I said, right out there in Hamlet. He said, can I go? I said, well, yeah, you can go. He said, okay. And he goes out there and he sits down in the church service. And the preacher that knew what he was talking about would preach to him. And he didn't get saved that week. But the next week that man came and he came to the altar right here. And he got saved. His, he got saved. His wife got saved. His daughter got saved. His son got saved. His other daughter got saved. He is a preacher of the gospel now because something happened to him that changed his life. That he said, I want to give you what I got. That's memory lane. That can be the very present news if you tap into it. Walk in the Spirit. You'll get excited again. Love. You start loving people that don't need to be loved in our minds. Coming in next week. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I remember the day when the Lord saved me. I remember the joy that flooded my soul. My, my wife and I was dating. 
we was dating, she's sitting back there. You going back there? I'm coming up here. I was sitting right here. An old six foot six, six foot seven Indian chief preached so hard his, his false teeth pop out and he had to <laughs> throw them back in. Preached on the grace of God. And it hit me sitting right there tw almost 22 years ago. It hit me that his grace was greater than my sin. I was saved. Had been saved a month. I lost it. I ugly cried. Snot. I didn't care. Service was over with. It's time to go. Everybody leaving. It's just all coming out that His grace was greater than my sin. Y'all don't know what I did, but I did. And He did. And He says, I took you down there because something's missing in the church house today. We're not excited about where He brought us from. Love is the key. It's your starting point. You add on to these things, you'll be a different person. Let's pray. Father, your word is forever settled in heaven. And you just dropped handfuls of purpose right down in this place tonight. All we got to do is just pick it up. Mm, just like that. Mm, mm. Our life can be changed tonight. We don't have to wait. We keep putting it off. We're getting tired. It ain't none of that, God. You love me with an everlasting love. You drew me. My, my, my. You saved me? Me? I'm sorry for taking you for granted. I won't to show that love in my life. So help us, help us as a church collectively, body of Christ, not just a building, the body of Christ, fall back in love with you. Because if we fall in love with you, everything else will fall in place. May we trust you with that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.